um, we can go ahead and get started. So uh, I appreciate you uh, taking the time to, to talk with me. Um, and, uh, uh, you know, I kind of shared in the email um, what my thoughts were. And, and uh, I just felt like I needed to, to somehow do something. And uh, I thought conversation would be a good place to start and just kind of open up understanding. And, and uh, so anyway, I respect you and, and would love to hear what you have to say. So, um, you know, I, I kind of said, if we can just get regular people that are in our own communities and people can hear from all those people, you know, and if I do this for 30 days, there's person after person that will have their stories and they'll, they'll all be different. And, and, uh, but I think there's going to be a lot of commonalities and, uh, it can open up the eyes of people that, you know, I don't have to deal with, uh, you know, racism. I don't feel it. I don't see it. Um, personally, you know, I, I can see it from kind of a, a distance, but, uh, so I think to, um, educate people that think, Hey, this is, maybe this is a thing of the past. Uh, wasn't this something that we dealt with, you know, Martin Luther King dealt with that and we've had a black president and, and isn't this just gone? Uh, and, and, uh, um, hopefully there's some level of that being true, but, but obviously there's, there's stuff going on now that's, that's out there. So, uh, education and, and how do we move on from there? Um, so, uh, I, if you can give a, like kind of a bit of a bio, a little bit of your background story, where you grew up and kind of what happened. And then, uh, if you have personal stories of, of how maybe racism may have touched you, uh, and then maybe tie that into where we're at today. Um, I'll kind of just give you the floor, uh, you, you bring things up. I'll let you talk for a while. I may ask you about something that you brought up at some point in time, but uh, I'd really love to just give you the floor and, and me just listen and, and learn from you. So um, uh, as a quick intro, um, you know, you're a regular guy to me, but you know, you know, you're kind of a celebrity too, you know, uh, Husky all-time team and, and uh, you know, uh, still hold the record for five sacks in a game for the Huskies and, and uh, did some amazing things there and now I've done a phenomenal job uh, at Mariner High School and, and uh, the impact you, you have in the kids' lives there. So um, if you can give us a little background, uh, the floor is yours. Yeah, um, yeah so like I said, um, you know, I, I do, I kind of view my, one, thanks for doing this. Uh, yeah. it's, it's great to <laughs> be asked for you to really talk. And then, um, um, yes, I, I, I view myself as a football coach and I have a lot of respect for you and, everybody I coach with and coach against. And it's, it's interesting in the last, you know, couple months along with this, you know, world pandemic and everything we have going on, this, the, the racial tension that um, you're able to, uh, we're starting to have conversations. I think they're good conversations. And I've had conversations over the last couple of weeks, like, Oh yeah, no, no, yes, that really happens. And this is how I really feel, even though I may never bring it up, but um, just, uh, just a little bit of my background. Um, you know, I, I graduated high school, I, I grew up in California, and um, I grew up in California, I graduated in, in uh, the 70s, 1978, played for the, and came up to Washington, played for the Huskies. And, um, um, and so my, you know, my upbringing was, was okay. Um, um, you know, when you talk about racism and I almost, so I'm, I'm like 60 and, um, uh, uh, unfortunately my father died when I was fairly young, when I was 25. Um, and there are so many kind of conversations and questions I have for him. And just to put it in context a little bit, um, you know, that uh, I was born in California and my, my, uh, my dad grew up uh, when he was little, he moved to California, but he was born in, in Graham, Kentucky. And, um, and that's where he's from. And, um, and he was born in 30, he was born in like 34. And, the thing that really strikes me about it, my mom was born in Kansas, and um, and they both basically migrated to uh, to California, and um, what uh, the questions I would have for him and for a lot of people that moved out west from that at that time was, 
that, you know, as a, as a young man, he lived in Jim Crow South. And, um, and, uh, and, I, and I just think back to those times that him, him coming from that type of upbringing where if, you know, my father, if he would have said something, looked at a white woman, um, that uh, at that time they were still hanging people. And so, I mean, so you really think about that. And that's, uh, um, and so uh, in a lot of ways, if you really think about Jim Crow South in, in like my generation, I was on something with Lorenzo and we talked about how our parents came out. And it wasn't necessarily, you know, I mean, obviously it was opportunity jobs and those kinds of things, but a lot of it was like escaping terrorism. Mm -hmm. And it really, I mean, it really is. I mean, the fact that, um, um, so, being uh, a kid of the 60s, and um, I grew up, I was actually, I lived down in um, Inglewood, and so I do remember uh, when I grew up, there was this sense of pride. I, 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 I have this vivid image of being about six or seven years old, standing on a corner, because I was Inglewood, California, so Southern Cal, and, and, and really like a, it was a black Panthers rolling by, and it's you know I don't remember everything, but I do remember you stand on the street and you hold your hand up, mm -hmm. and it's black power, and to to see that that where my where my dad was you know at that age, or if he did something like that, it would get him killed to a point where where in the '60s you were empowered, mm -hmm. and um, um, and um, and race was always race was always something. Yes, I've been called the N word. Uh, yes, I fought. Now the beauty difference was in California when we grew up, there was those, you know, obviously there was the police and I grew up as a kind of a teenager in the seventies. And, and, and yes, have I, have I punched somebody for calling me in where I, I was able to fight back. Matter of fact, that was the, that was the thing. It was like, you, do, you do not accept anybody calling you that word anymore. So therein lies where, where the difference is. We were given the right to, to fight back on the West coast. Um, and, um, um, but yet and still, there was always those things. And, um, and, um, and so one of the things, one of the things I'll, I'll throw a word out and I, I'll call it driving while black. Mm -hmm. And have you ever been pulled over driving while black? Mm -hmm. And, and, and I would, yes, every, every black man has been driving down the street. Um, and for no other reason, you took a turn too fast. It's, it, we call it driving my black. You know, what would what, you do? I was black and I was driving. Um, I, I lived on Mercer Island. Um, I stopped several times on Mercer Island. I was stopped going to my job of young teacher and they were looking for a suspect. So mm -hmm. I was a suspect. And so, so there's, there's those things. And, and, and the thing is you kind of, even though I like said West coast, I mean, for the most part, nothing's going to happen. You kind of accept that as being just, as that being okay. Um, I know for, it was when I was a young coach, there was one time where in, on Mercer Island when I was driving with, um, I don't know, Al Roberts said his kids were playing on Mercer Island. So the, the three black kids that were on the team were in my car yeah. and they were in my car and we get pulled over. And it was like, well, you took the turn. I, and that's the only time I looked at it and said, no, here's why you stopped. She stopped just because we were black. He, he denied it. But, um, and so, but that's just that, you know, that's, that's something that happens. Um, and just to tie, to tie that still, you know, to, to, um, you know, have things gotten better? Yes. But my son, who is a college basketball coach, um, was in, and it was an, it was kind of a, it was, he was in Georgia recruiting, um, had a nice car in January before everything hit. And he gets pulled over. And all he did to me is he told me the story. And there's just this understanding of why he got pulled over. Mm -hmm. And what he said was, I got to wear more of my Oregon State stuff. So when I'm telling them the story, that they understand. And, and, the, and the cop pulls up next to him, looks at him, gets behind him, pulls him over. Asks him where he got the car. Where he, where he get the car. And so those types of things... Um, uh, you know, happen. I know that I've talked with other coaches and one of the things that, uh, you know, I asked, uh, say, Mark Keel, I don't know if you have Mark Keel on the list, but I, I, don't know, I said, we were talking about this and I said, Mark, 
okay, when, I said, when do you get stopped? I didn't, I didn't ask him when you, when you get stopped. I said, when did you get stopped? And he, he told me the story. I, I got pulled over, got handcuffed, and they, they were looking for somebody. And that kind of stuff happens. Mm -hmm. um, and so uh, I had another friend asked me something about, and, uh, you know, my son got married in Montana in, in, in Bozeman. And, and it was, it's an interesting conversation, but the conversation, he said, so you mean to tell me if you're driving through Idaho and, and, and Montana, that I've been there many a times and things are fine, that, that, that you're afraid something would happen. I said, probably wouldn't happen, but I wouldn't be surprised mm -hmm. if I'm in a small town and something was to occur. So, you know, and especially if, if I was agitated that uh, that uh, I would be viewed as 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 somebody that's angry. So, um, um, you know, those are the things that uh, that that really bother you. And so, um, the thing about what's happened lately, you know, watching the George Floyd's and 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 the, the senseless deaths. I mean, I think you you go back to all the stories of of and you know, I mean. Uh, you think that standing there myself as, you know, six, seven year old thinking, you know, black power, things are changing mm -hmm. and they are, but then you see what happens to George Floyd and just the, 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 the indifference in his murder and the, and the, and the, and the, and the, and, um, um, the other young man running in Georgia. It's just, it's, it's, um, um, and that's that's the piece that that uh, uh, that when we kind of go. This is not over. Ahmad Arbery, is that right? Arbery, yeah. Sorry about that. And just there, it goes on and on, and and the thing is, your numbers guy. I mean, there's so many we don't know about. You know, the and 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 people get away with it. And so if you go back, and just my general feeling is, I know you asked a couple questions. Um, there has been uh, uh there has been um. Um, at some level, you can call it, I mean, you, you want to use the bad words, genocide. Mm -hmm. um, you talk about slavery, you talk about Jim Crow, and you talk about the, the, uh, the you know, locking up the criminals, the prisons, and the system that, that's set up, that there is a level of that, if you probably looked at the numbers, you know, you start looking at the numbers. Yes, we know about that in Tulsa, there was, there were um, there were 300 African Americans on Black Wall Street that were murdered. That nobody was ever held held accountable for that. Oh, oh by the way, it's the only time that Americans have been bombed on U.S. soil, and uh, you know I guess it'd be I mean, in, ter in terms of by Americans. Right. And I'm sure there wasn't many people with planes back then. They could probably figure out who did that. And um, um, it's those kinds. It's it's that. It's those types of injustices that that affect you. And then the, the, the whole economic piece um, is the other piece that you really look at in terms of um, the GI Bill and, and how African Americans that served in this military were not included in the GI Bill, especially around the time when the middle class was being built, the redlining, the, all the stuff that, that has, that has um, um, created um, uh, a situation where uh, it's that much harder for African Americans to be successful. Um, and so, so the word that uh, I think a lot of people may not understand, it gets thrown out there, systemic racism, right? Yes. And so that's kind of what you're looking at is it, in the under, underneath things, there's stuff that have been going on for a long time. So we can say, hey, we're, you're equal and you've got the right to vote and you've got all these different things. What are you complaining about? But there's been this pattern for so long that you're behind. Yes. Right? Yes. I mean, collectively as a group, you're behind. Right. And, um, and so there is nobody my father's age that was, that was, that was allowed to have, um, that there's no generational wealth. Mm -hmm. There is no, um, um, uh, that has taken place. And there's, I mean, I mean, ultimately when most of the middle class was built, the African Americans were left out of that. Um, equation and uh, well you mentioned Oklahoma 
uh, the slaughter that happened there, that was because there had been a community yeah. of blacks that had become successful, yeah. right? And I think that, you know, uh, I, here, here's my, my theory that, um, so Ulysses S. Grant, which, which I see is, is um, you know, I, I don't know why, I mean, he's a hero because uh, what he did was he's, he decided, I call him, he's like a Belichick if we want to go, go football terms. Mm -hmm. I mean, his, whole, his deal was they were traitors and he was going to win. Mm -hmm. And he sacrificed a lot of lives um, to win the war and, and didn't, didn't allow Robert E. Lee to actually drag that thing out so he could drag out slavery and, 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 and made sure that they surrendered. I think the piece that really has been missing, and I think it's really kind of we see today, is reconstruction. And I think the I think people got the people got tired of of the reconstruction and um, that that only lasted ten years. And I said in my mind it, it needed to last it needed to last a generation. Mm -hmm. You know, if it lasts a generation, you're not sitting here talking about the Confederate flag. You're not sitting here talking about bases being named after traitors. Um, um, you know, so, um, and it needed to last longer. Now, I understand that, I mean, was, what was uh, over 600,000 in deaths? I mean, I think people get a little tired. I mean, he, um, it was always kind of said, it's better to be, it's better than being property. You go from property to three quarters of a man is better than, mm -hmm. I guess. I mean, it's an improvement, I guess. And if you, if that's what you want to call it, but, um, um, I think those types of things, I think we're still battling the fact that we haven't really come to terms with what happened, you know, um, over 150 years ago. I mean, it's... I think what you touched on right there, what you just said is over 150 years ago. Uh, I think there's this misperception that that's a long time ago, right? Um, you were just talking about your, your father and your grandfather uh, and what they lived through. Um, and, you know, I like to look, I'm a history teacher, and I like to look at history in terms of contemporaries, people whose lives overlap each other, right? Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm 47. I was born in 1973. Um, and so if there was somebody that was 100 years old when I was born, let's say there's some little old lady who was 100 years old. Well, that means she was alive in 1873. That's like Wild West time right? That's just a few years after the Civil War's finished, yet she was alive at the same time as me. Now take her, go back one more, yeah, 100 years. That's 1773. That's three years before where there was the United States of America, right? And that's, so there was people alive at the same time as me that were alive at the same time as people before America. Yeah. I mean, that's just two people, right? Yeah. It, and so 150 years might sound like a lot, but that's, just a couple of lives, you know? Yeah. And uh, so for people to expect that the tragedies and, and uh, atrocities that took place to just, you know, go away, you know, um, and has there been any type of um, really acknowledgement from our government uh, about slavery and segregation or have we just kind of moved on? Has there, has there actually been acknowledgement of that? And, and if not, would that be an important step? Um, I, yeah, that's, that's an interesting question. That's, I mean, it's kind of a loaded question a little bit in terms mm -hmm. of all depends on who's in office. <laughs> um, um, I think there's, you know, there's, um, I think that, well, a history teacher, have you, have you, do, I mean, I'm going to put you on, but did you, do you teach, uh, um, the history of Tulsa, the, the... So I have not taught U.S. history at the okay. high school. Okay. No, um, no, but not, yeah. If I, if I get the opportunity, I 100% would. And I think that, I think that it's more about, it's more about acknowledging, you know, kind of the healing part is that it's like, yeah, we're all here. It wasn't us. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and we're all here talking about it. And let's tell the real story, mm -hmm. I think, is, 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 and continue to tell the real story and that being a part of it. And I know that, you know, at, at this point right now, it's just that the fact that, um, you know, I've, I've had probably a lot of conversations with my son about some things. And, and before, if you, if you and here's, here's, here's one of the things, I listened to a meeting with him and some, of the, some college basketball coaches. And it's, it's like, if you talk too much, if you're the Colin Kaepernick, Mm -hmm. you know, there's a backlash when he's really right. 
Mm -hmm. And the, the, and he, and that was part of the conversation, you know, you're a college coach. And one of the, one of the messages they got, which I heard from a lot of these guys as I'm listening to their zoom is, you know, a lot of those colleges back then, was, they didn't want to, I mean, the players, if they knew, okay, they're not going to, but they told the coaches you're not. Mm -hmm. And, um, and, and I guess the thing is you just, I mean, you're, there's this thing we talk about sometimes is, is and what's probably nice about, What's a good part right now is trying to get enough people to listen and people are listening, but you become that guy, you know, we call it that guy is just, uh, and, um, who's just trying to spit up and spit the truth. He's trying to say the truth, you know? And, and so, so I think that, uh, I think that's, you know, a big part is just one, number one is education. I think education and being able to acknowledge the stories and being able to, uh, you know, make decisions on, 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 on our history. And so, so, so one thing that, uh, could help a little bit with that is, um, when we finish with this, if you want to shoot me an email at some point with, uh, if there's, uh, whether it's a great article on Tulsa, whether it's a, a YouTube video, uh, any, any resources that you have that you think would be important for people to know about, if you send them to me, even if it's just the title and then people can look it up. I will attach it uh, in the description to this video so people can okay. have that resource. So anything that you think would be important, send that to me. All right. Yep. Yeah. Um, so let me ask you a couple of things here. Um, and kind of look at your question. Yeah. 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 Um, racism. Um, how would you define it? Um, well, I mean, overt racism or, or overt racism is, um, viewing a group of people, um, less than human than mm -hmm. you, um, or, or a certain way. Okay. So, and you're going to act a certain way and, and. You know, that means, of, and, and because of who you are without, without getting to know you. So, okay. So was, follow up to that, um, because, you know, I've watched a lot and read a lot and, and, uh, can a minority be ra racist? Do you believe? Um, my knee jerk re reaction is say no, because you're coming from a, um, um, you're talking about African Americans. Um, um, you know, you're going I'm going to say no, because you're the one that's always fighting to be equal to. Mm -hmm. and, um, and so maybe I, um, um, yeah, I'm sure, I mean, I'm sure people that don't, that they mean like people put people in certain groups, but, and so maybe my thing of racism is, is, is that you, you look down upon and you, uh, you mistreat a certain group of individuals. So some level of power needs to be in play. Yeah, I think that so. some level of power needs to be, um, if you, if you ask me why, I mean, okay. I wouldn't, um, you know, like I said, um, you know, uh, I wouldn't call, yeah, I, I do call some people. It's like, man, you gotta relax. You gotta know people, but, yeah. um, it's different when somebody's trying to exert power, right. which is, which is, I think something, you know, it's, it's, it's yeah. It, yeah, so I think it's more of a power thing that okay. you try to exert. Thank you. Um, how about some advice? Um, the school that I teach at, very small minority groups, right? There's not a lot of African American students. Um, there's no staff in the high school um, that are African American. Um, and it can be a challenge in that situation uh, uh, to maybe address uh, an African-American uh, student or athlete um, where you don't want to be, you know, yeah. called racist, right, in how you address it. So I think people t tend to walk on eggshells at times. Um, what's the best way to, to just show that you care and yet hold them accountable? Um, and, and how do you handle that? Because I think there's a, there's a need, obviously you can reach people that I can't, 
in a different way, right? Um, I think we can both reach them, but you can reach them in a different way than I can because. Well, that's one. I mean, like I said, I mean, I'm, and I'm, you know, they are teenagers. Right. And teenagers, teenagers will. And, and I think that, I think that, uh, I think that one of the things that, <laughs> so I'm going to use the police officers, it's, it's, I think that, and this is, you know, I don't know about you, this is the, today's uh, kids today anyway, mm-hmm. kids today. Um, I think they have too much, Im- well, they have a lot of information, too much information, mm-hmm. they have a lot of information. And I think that um, there is a level of patience and, and um, that, that you'll have to show when a kid chooses to um, address you with those um, types of accusations and you need to try to keep it. I mean, you, you, you have to be the adult in the room right. and, uh, and not, get, not get defensive but say, okay, here's what I'm talking about. And I, I have, I mean, like I said, I'd love to say that, uh, um, and I sometimes, I, I, and I think this is where we're changing. It's like, tell people, it's like, this is where, I don't know about you, but being very calm with kids right now is uh, some of the old stuff that I can even say that I've been in your face and all that kind of stuff that I try to roll back because it's not as effective with kids. Yep. And so, and so one of the things, one of the things that you can say, you can talk about the systematic stuff that you have to be aware of. And then you got to go, then you got to do your job. I mean, I don't know that. And, and, um, and that's something that you, that you have to deal with. Um, I've been accused of stuff and never that one, <laughs> but I've been accused of stuff. And mm-hmm. I, I, I can, I have a list and it's coaches, we can all sit down. Um, but, um, I think it's like, I think it falls in other same categories of being patient and that, um, and trying to understand where your kids are coming from. Um, yeah. I think that, and I, I don't, I mean, so in that, in that standpoint, I don't, so it's kind of funny. You almost have to take the, the, I think individuals, you know, when, when I'm coaching kids, I'm coaching kids. Mm-hmm. I think that, you know, as a staff member, you got to figure out how you're just coaching kids. And so when they come at you with that is, you know, check, you know, did I, did I, you know, I mean, I don't, I mean, you um, understand and maybe educate yourself on some things, but, um, um, but then, then I think it's, 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 um, um, you have to use your best judgment in terms of you have to deal with the kid. Right. Oh, I mean, I guess so. Okay, a uh, couple more. Um, so what would you like to see, um, whether it's out of political leaders, legislators, um, reforms in police, uh, what would you like to see come out of what's happening right now? I would like to see, one, we tell the word talk about awareness, and then two, you know, I, I've, I've, I've got another word, you know, like I said, I mean, like, like I said, I, I grew up and I'm fortunate to grow big, tall, fast and University of Washington campus. And I will say that I didn't have the greatest upbringing, but I was smart enough to get on the University of Washington campus and say, I'm not going to be here for five years and not get a degree, get a degree. You know, I mean, I had opportunities and, and took advantage of things that were given to me, um, you know not given those things, I'm not sure where I would end it up. You know, I've got others that were, that didn't do well. And, um, um, and I'm just not sure um, that, um, you know, I mean, like I said, it's not clear cut. Um, how do you go back and, and find those groups going to Chicago um, and, and, and work with the work with, because I mean, you see all the shootings and all that kind of stuff. And I, I would say that when you look at Chicago and those inner city places, you go, you go back when they were building the suburbs and they made sure all the African Americans stayed there and they took all the resources out of there. And then what you see is generations of, of treating African American males as less than. So one of the things that happens, and people don't realize this, is that so African American males, black and black violence, and the and the census shootings are they don't view themselves as they view themselves as less than. And so how do you go in those communities and right that wrong? Um, you know, through education, 
Um, and so there, and so there's reparations. I mean, and say, okay, look, we have done, and and is it is it programs? Is it is it you know you get a three you get free education. Um, um, do you do how do you help the, the the generational wealth that was taken away through the system? How do you get so how do you how do you improve that through education? How do you now and people would people would get mad because I it's just like just like reconstruction that needs to happen for fifty to hundred years. It will I will not see the end of that in my right. life. And that's one of the things that really strikes me about this. And when I go back when I was when I've been stopped driving my black and now my son's doing the same and that it's it's and it's we have to we have to do it's a long game thing that has to be put in place through through we, with our government that you know you know maybe maybe i get a loan because i'm african-american male descent of, of, of south that that instead of playing 3.5 and playing 2.5 mm -hmm. just i mean to, to help a group build a, a, that type of wealth i think that's generally now will people do that i mean that's where that's where people that's where that's where people will say, well, why, why are we going to do that for them? And that's where that, they're in line. There's the rub. Um, i tell you another one that's really interesting. I'm going to talk about the district I'm in right now. Mm -hmm. uh, um, um, the difference between Mariner and Kamiak. Mm -hmm. If you really think about the difference between Mariner and Kamiak, it's if you went and you did. And one of the things that there's been studies, I'll put up one of the things I'll send you, is that one of the ways that they improve schools and where you you where you improve the um um achievement of minority groups is through integration so busing busing which which is another area where 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 um so many african americans made great strides like in boston in mm -hmm. california actually in seattle i mean i was able to teach at garfield and it was fairly, and um, is one of the air, one of the things you can do to improve minority achievement. Mm -hmm. So, so like, and from an education standpoint, equality or equity, you know, to equitable schools should be more important than um, going to the school that you want. And so I've had a conversation that we can say we can have an equity team and all that kind of stuff. But if you, they took the kids from from the from OV, which two of the middle schools, and they just said, "Okay, you are going to Mariner," and it it would solve a lot of problems. Right. <laughs> but now what you're going to have is a bunch of old, bunch of people that, that are going to OV think they're going to Camac and say we're going to go to the we're not going to go to the ghetto school. Mm -hmm. That's what they'll say. And so yeah. and then when 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 I talk with a Somebody and you said that, and I said, "Yes, you just answered your question. You just answered your question because people will, will, you know, this conversation is great. Not to say that, not the point, but but now are we gonna are we willing to to do the hard work, um, which is not something that has to be right in front of us, mm -hmm. but uh, you know, government, um, all the things we need to do to make sure that um, we we help a, a group that." really got you know like i said who uh we've been uh for 350 years have been, yep. uh, discriminated against so yep. okay um one other thing is uh what gives you the greatest hope moving forward that we can see um some significant change uh and you know will we completely eradicate racism i don't know that that can happen um but what can we do to uh significantly reduce it and and uh make it something that is just a few fringe people is there anything what, what gives us the greatest hope um i think the greatest hope is probably you know the fact that we're sitting here talking and it's something that's on everybody's mind mm -hmm. and, um and um and i've had more conversations in the in the last you know, two or three months about this. And even with my own son, it's kind of funny, like he grew up in Mercer Island. And so, I mean, so, and you know, and you kind of, and, and, um, and so I think that gives, that always gives you a hope when you find a lot of people trying to buy into, you know, um, um, writing, um, 
uh, a wrong in this country. And, um, um, and really what I think it really is, um, I think the only way truly that we're going to be able as a country that we're going to be able to make it because this thing has, it hasn't, one thing to really, it hasn't gone away. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, it hasn't gone away and you've got a lot of angry people and it hasn't gone away. And so, um, um, and so that's what gives me hope. Um, it gives me hope. Um, like I said, the, 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 <laughs> I kind of go, it's not going to, it's not going to, in my lifetime, it won't get done. And, and I go back to, you know, my six or seven year old self standing on a corner with the black pants and driving by with a fist up in the air. And you think that, you know, now things are really going to change. And that's, um, that's. Let, let me ask this. Did you think that you would see a black president in your lifetime? Uh, no. Yeah. And no. And you think that no. And, um, uh, James Baldwin, actually, if you want to some good reading stuff, and I'm actually mm -hmm. got, I got a book, James Baldwin has got uh, a, a pretty good special on HBO or something like that. Or, mm -hmm. And it's, a, it's pretty good, but he talked, it was really interesting. Him, he, uh, he talks about uh, Robert Kennedy. And uh, really, if you ever have time, he talks about Robert Kennedy talking about in 40 years, and it was in 40 years, we may even see a black president. Mm -hmm. And what he, his whole thing was kind of funny, listen to him, which was back, you know, 40 years later, it was black president. But um, his whole point was 40 years, we've been here, we built this. Why do we need to wait 40 years to have a president? I yeah. mean, we, we're, we, you know, and that was his, his whole point was like, wait, you know, we built the White House. Mm -hmm. And um, so, you know, so that was, that was, uh, yeah, so. Awesome. Well, um, if there's any other final comments you want to make, um, otherwise I just want to let you know, I appreciate you and, uh, thank you so much for coming and, and sharing uh, openly and, and, uh, if there's anything I can do to support, let me know. All right. Hey, thanks for doing this. Yep. And, well, hopefully we'll get to football soon. Hey, let's do it. Yeah, all right. Thank you, Mark.